it's Tina and I am back and I am here with a long overdue highly requested swatch fest of my MAC single eyeshadow collection. Now I have gone ahead and collected every single shade of the permanent range from MAC and I have some discontinued shades as well that I'm gonna throw into the mix just for color references but there are over 130 shades for me to swatch. So what I've done is divided this video into two separate videos. One, I'm gonna swatch my neutral shades, and then we're gonna go ahead and swatch the more colorful shades. And both videos are posted at the same time, so you're not gonna miss either one of them. And I will link both of them in the description box for easy reference. And what I'm also gonna try to do is leave timestamps in each of the descriptions for specific shades. So I'm just gonna put a simple description of the shades and you can jump ahead and use this video for easy reference for any shades that you're looking for swatches and you wanna see how they look against a darker skin, you can jump ahead using the timestamps below. And I'll also go ahead and leave a timestamp right here in the video so you can jump ahead to the swatches if that's all you're here for. And for mobile users, I'll also leave a link in the description box so you can jump right into the swatches if that's all you're here for. Because I wanted to do a synopsis of the MAC price instructor as well as the two options for the eyeshadow packaging that is available and where they are available for purchase as well as run through the different finishes that are available for these eyeshadows. Now MAC went ahead and did something a little bit unprecedented in the cosmetics world as we know it today. They did a price in restructure and no they didn't do a price increase they actually dropped the price in of their pro eyeshadow pans and they dropped it significantly like we're not talking about oh 10% you know whatever they dropped it 40%. These are now $6 a pop when they used to be $10. And that kind of prompted this video because I definitely wanted to give you guys a reference video so you can check out swatches to see if there are any shades that you're interested in trying out at this new price point, which I think they're definitely a great value for money. And in addition to that, MacCosmetics.com is now available on Ebate, so you can get a rebate for your Mac purchases. So it's 3% currently, and I will leave my Ebates referral link down below. If you click that link, you're gonna get a referral credit. So I think it's $10 that you get credited to your account. And then I also get a kickback. I forget how much it is, but I also get a kickback. So there's something in it for me and there's something in it for you. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Ebates, Ebates is getting a rebate on each of your online purchases as long as the store is linked through Ebates. So it's like making money for doing regular online shopping Things that you would buy full price anyway because the price isn't affected. You're paying the same price as you would any other time, but you're just getting a percentage of that purchase back. And they made it really easy where you can download a quick link. It's an Ebates button on your desktop. So on your laptop, on your desktop, it's a quick button. So once you go onto a website, so you pull up Mac Cosmetics, you can just click that little button and it automatically activates your cashback. You don't have to do anything else. Whatever, you guys need to check it out. I'm just saying it's a great way to get money back on your purchases and you do get an actual check. I link it to my PayPal account. So I get a PayPal check every, I think it's every quarter. So every three months you get an Ebates rebate check. What? Hello? but I thought I would mention that to you guys. So like I mentioned, you can go ahead and buy the eyeshadows in single pan form, and these are the pro pan form, so when you go on the MAC website and you scroll through the eyeshadow listing, you will see the pro pan option, which are $6 each, like I said, and they contain 0.04 ounces or 1.35 grams of product, or 0.05 ounces or 1.5 grams of product. Now, depending on the shade and the finish, the size in might differ. So it's either 0 0.04 ounces or 0.5 ounce, 05 ounces, which is the typical size of a small eyeshadow on the market. So think about Urban Decay single eyeshadows, they're the same size. Now the size is a little bit on the lower end of the spectrum 
considering that brands have been doing larger size eyeshadows now they're doing 0 0.07 ounces and 0 0.08 ounces so they are on the lower end of the spectrum however it's very rare that you're gonna run through an eyeshadow unless you use it every single day and at six dollars a pop I mean 0 0.04 0 0.05 ounces is quite a lot of eyeshadow and coming from a mid-range brand it's a great price point I mean this is comparable now to indie brands such as Makeup Geek who touted themselves as an affordable brand, an affordable option, an affordable alternative to MAC Cosmetics. Now MAC has reduced their prices to compete with those different brands and they're even now on the same playing field as drugstore eyeshadows. So I definitely think you can find great shades from MAC and for $6, like who wouldn't want to try these out? Now they're also available in single pot forms. The pricing of this has not changed. These are $16 a pop, again, with a 0 .04, 0 0.05 ounces, dependent on the shade and the finish. Now, these come in the signature, well-known MAC black pots with the transparent lid with the MAC logo on the front. And you can see the color through the transparent lid. On the back, you have a label with the shade name, the shade finish, and manufacturing information. There's also a date code, and if you research date codes, you'll figure out what month and what year your eyeshadows were made. And these are secured by a tab fit. So they have a little tab that secures them close. And I just love these. And I keep mine in singles. If I do have them in pot forms, I don't go ahead and depot them. I mean, really, if I'm going to depot, I might as well just buy the Pro Palette for a cheaper price and just pop them into a Z palette or the empty MAC palettes that are available. And they have quite a few options available. They have anything ranging from a duo, which holds two eyeshadows, to a 15 pan palette with the insert and if you just get the palette itself without the insert you're gonna hold 20 plus eyeshadows in there securely and the magnet on the back really holds it securely to MAC palettes however one thing I must mention is because of this magnet it's almost like a reverse polarity or a different polarity than like a Z palette or other magnetized palettes on the market so they don't fit as snugly or as securely as I would like but you can buy magnetic sheets and lay it on the bottom and they will stick to that magnet instead of using the magnet in like the Z palette, the one that's pre-built into the Z palette. So that's the only hiccup. It's better to store these in the MAC palettes because they hold a little bit more securely. Now, as I mentioned, these eyeshadows are available for sale on the MAC Cosmetics website. You can find them in the single pot form like this, and there are 132 shades available in the single pot form. Or you can go ahead and buy the Pro Palette Singles, which is just a magnetized pan, and these are available in 120 shades. Now, of course, that means there are some shades that are available in the single pan form that won't be available in the Pro Palette form. But there are also some shades available in the Pro Pan form that aren't available in the Single Pan form. So depending on the shade you're looking for, you might have to toggle through the pot versus the pan to figure out where your shade falls. But most of the shades are available in the Pro Palette form. Now if you want to go ahead and purchase these in store, the Pro Pan forms are only available at freestanding MAC stores. So Mac stores that stand alone in the mall. So they're not a part of Macy's or Bloomingdale's. They're standalone stores. Those are where you will find the single pans. And if you go to a Mac Pro store, you'll also be able to get the Pro Pan forms. Now, if you're shopping at a Mac that's in a Macy's or a Bloomingdale's or a Nordstrom store, you're only going to be able to purchase them in the single pot form. So be mindful of that. I think the best way to go about this is to purchase them online. And hopefully these swatches will help you in figuring out what shades you want to go ahead and try out. Now, with all the shades available, Mac also has eight different finishes of eyeshadows that are available and we're gonna run through those quickly now the first finish is one that we're very familiar with these days and it's the matte finish which is a high color payoff in a no shine matte finish and that means there is no reflective pearls in this it's a flat color with no shine no sheen and these shades can be a little bit powdery a little bit chalky but now I find the MAC matte formula to be a pretty decent formula in fact I really enjoy it in the neutral shades so the browns and the beiges and those neutral tones I really enjoy the MAC matte formula for that 
The colorful shades tend to be hit or miss, and then in the limited edition collections, they tend to be hit or miss. But in the neutral lineup, I think they have a great matte formula. Now the second finish is a matte squared, which is an intense opaque matte finish with an exceptionally rich color payoff. Now MAC has discontinued most of their matte squared eyeshadows, and it's a pity because the matte squared eyeshadows was like a creamier, smoother version of the matte finish from MAC. And there's still a few available and you'll see them throughout the video, but they're a beautiful finish. I really love the matte squared formula. Then we have the frost finish, which is an iridescent shine that adds a highlight to any color. And that's another finish that we're very familiar with. Now the thing to note is that with MAC, their frost shades are not a high metallic sheen that you're used to these days in some of these eyeshadows that you see on the market that are like this foil metallic finish. These are just a very almost subtle sheen on the skin. They do have reflective pigments in them and pearls. You will see a shine, but they're more flattering on a variety of skin textures. So if you have crepey skin or you have textured skin, they're a little bit more forgiving than a metallic finish. And, and I do find the sheen that's available with the frost finish from MAC is a little bit more wearable for the majority of all skin types, all skin tones, and all ages. So that's a great thing. And keep in mind that some of the shades are gonna be a little bit more high shine than others, but the majority of the shades are a subtle sheen. Then we have the satin finish, which is a pure color in a satin finish style. It provides a soft, subtle, non-frost, light refractive sheen. So these are more of a cross between a frost finish and a matte finish, where you have the color payoff of a matte, because mattes have the best color payoff and the most intensity, but they have a subtle sheen to them that don't make them flat matte. But they're not like frosty or reflective at all or metallic. They're just a simple sheen, like almost it's a natural sheen to the eyelids. Then we have the luster finish, which is smoothly pearlized, intensely frosted with the Luxe Ultra Fine Condition Finish. And this is my least favorite finish from MAC. And there are quite a few shades available and I don't know why. These shades are more of a chunky formula, a chunky texture. They have ultra fine shimmer in them or glitter. So they're particles that kind of dust off and flake off all over the place. And they're a very sheer finish. Now there are a couple of shades from the Luster finish that are actually really divine and you'll see it in the swatches, but the majority of the shades are not my favorite. And then we have the Velox finish, which is super fine, pigment rich, and very luxe. It's su supple to apply and provides silky smooth matte finish. Now the Velox finish is one of my favorites as well. It's a nice creamy smooth payoff, but it doesn't have as intense a color payoff as a full on matte. So it's a little bit lower in pigmentation, but it's still a smooth creamy formula and it applies really well. And then you have the Velox Pearl, which is vibrantly toned, velvety soft, shimmeringly metallic, and it's a Velox eyeshadow now overlaid with high shine pearl. So it has the smoothness, the creaminess of a Velox eyeshadow, but now it has that pearl and that sheen and that frost to it. And these are actually really beautiful formulas as well. I love the Velox Pearl finishes. And then last up we have the Velvets, which is a soft look finish with high color intensity. It has a plush velvety look and feel. Now for me, the Velvet finishes are almost like mostly matte shades, but some of them have a little bit of shimmer and glitter in them. Not shimmer, but glitter in them as well. So it's a matte looking finish, but it has a little bit more of a little touch of glitter that makes them not so full flat matte. So now I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the swatches of the neutral eyeshadows, which is a compilation of the ivories, the beiges, and the brown shades. And you'll have a little bit of pinky tones tossed in as well, because there are pinky browns available. And I think there is a great selection of neutral colors from MAC in various finishes that you are sure to be able to find perfect colors for you and you can build your perfect neutral palette. So let's go ahead and jump into the swatches. And the first shade up is Gesso, which is a matte vivid white. This is kind of a matte sheer white. You do have to build it up to get great color payoff. And if you build it up, you can get decent color payoff, but it's not the best matte white eyeshadow I've ever tried. 
The next shade up is White Frost, which is described as a vivid white with icy shimmer, and this is a frost finish. And it's just a shimmery white shade. It's not really icy or sh overly shimmery at all. And this one looks very close to gesso, but it just has a little bit of a sheen to it instead of just being a flat matte. Then next we have Crystal Avalanche, which is a Velox, and this is described as a white with reflex. This is a beautiful, very pure white frosty shade and it builds up pretty nicely. So if I was going for a white, I'd probably go for Crystal Avalanche since it builds up quite nicely and it doesn't look overly frosted on the skin. Then we have the shade Mylar, which is described as a creamy white with shimmer and this is a satin finish. And this one is more of an ivory shade. It has a little bit of a creamier undertone than a straight white. And then we have the shade Forgery, which is described as a sterling silver, and this is a luster finish, and that means it's just gonna be almost like a sheer base with loose, glittery particles. These luster shades are best used as accent colors or used damp because they get pretty flaky, as you can see, it just flakes off the skin really, it doesn't really stick to anything. And there you have it, these are the five white shades in the collection. There are some more ivory shades and we'll get into those next. Here we have the shade Blanc Type, which is a matte squared and this is described as a creamy beige. This one is just a creamy ivory shade and it's one of my favorite colors to build up on the inner tear duct area, especially for darker skin. So instead of going for a stark white, just go for more of an ivory shade and Blanc Type is a great choice. Then next we have the shade Brulee, which is a satin finish and this is described as a soft creamy beige. This one is a beautiful shade again for darker skin. It's not as stark as white and it does have more of a peachy undertone. It's great for highlighting the inner tear duct or just a light highlight under the brow. Then we have the shade Dazzle Light, which is a Velox and this one is described as a neutral with shimmer. This is a shimmery kind of nudie beige shade. It's a really beautiful color and it's muted and it has a touch of like a pinky sheen as well as a peachy sheen to it. So it would make a great highlight, inner tear duct highlight to bring a bit of life to the inner tear duct. It's really, really gorgeous. Then we have a very popular shade. This is nylon. It's a frost and it's described as a pale gold with icy shimmer. This one is more of a frosty, light, very light gold shade. Again, another beautiful highlight shade. It works great on the inner tear duct. All of these shades are just fantastic highlight shades, depending on what you're going for. And you can see this one is more of a white gold. And then we have Shroom, which is a satin finish. And this one is described as a soft beige with shimmer. And Shroom is a gorgeous highlight shade. It's muted, it's a little bit more subtle, less in your face, so this one actually works better for darker skin tones. As you can see, it's not as stark or in your face as nylon is. And again, here are those five more ivory beigey shades. Moving on to the more pinky ivory shades, the first up is Vapor, which is a velvet, and it's described as a peach pink with violet pearl. And this one is, again, just a ivory shade, but this one has a little bit of more of a pinky undertone and even like very minute micro shimmer. Next we have the shade Yogurt, which is a matte, and this one is a soft pale pink. And this one is a really beautiful, soft, very pale, pale pink shade. Then we have Floof, which is a frost, and this one is described as a frosted off-white. And Floof is a very shimmery, icy, pinky beige shade. Really beautiful again for a highlight. This one is really gorgeous and it applies beautifully. Then we have Sweet Lust, which is a luster finish. And this one is described as a pinky rose. And this shade again, it's a luster finish. So it has that micro sparkle in it and it's really more of a sheer base. But it applies pretty decently and it's a very, very pale pink with silver shimmer. The lusters aren't my favorite shades and you'll see as we go through the swatches that the lusters don't really pick up really well on the skin and then they flake off and dust off and get really messy. Then we have the shade Jest, which is a frost finish. This one is described as a soft peach with icy shimmer. And Jest is a beautiful shade. 
Again, a beautiful shimmery highlight. It is more of a peachy shimmery shade. Oh, so beautiful and applies really nicely. Moving on to more of the muted pinky shades, we have the shade Girly, which is a satin finish. It's described as a rosy pink with subtle shimmer. This one is a muted peachy pink shade. It's a very light shade, so it's better for lighter skin tones. But if you're looking for a light muted pink, this is a good one. Then we have the shade Dabling, which is a Velox finish and it's described as a pink with gold pearl. This is a similar shade to Girly, but it has more of a frosty shimmery finish. This one is actually really beautiful as a light pink highlight. Then we have the shade Pink Freeze, which is a frost finish and it's described as a bright pink with icy pearl. And this one is a very icy light pink shade. Again, a beautiful highlight color and it applies nicely. Then we have Swish, which is a frost finish described as a bright pink with icy shimmer. And this one is a really beautiful, more of a medium tone pink shade, a very frosty finish. Again, another beautiful icy pink shade. And here again are the light pink shades. The ivory and creamy beige shades, we have the shade Vanilla, which is a velvet. This one is described as a peachy ivory with reflex. Vanilla is a beautiful light peachy shade. It has a little bit of shimmer to it, but it's not too intense where you see it pick up on your skin. It just makes the color a little bit more blendable, and it's one of my favorite vanilla shades from MAC. Then we have the shade Grain, which is a satin finish. This one is described as a golden beige with icy shimmer. This one is a beautiful golden peachy beige shade with a beautiful golden shimmer to it. Actually, it's one of my favorite um, subdued highlight shades from MAC. This is great on darker skin because it's peachy, it has a little bit more of a golden undertone, so it's not gonna be full in your face ivory. And then we have Naked Lunch, which is a frost finish. This one is described as a minimal pink with shimmer. Naked Lunch is another one of my favorites. This one is a higher shine than green. It's a similar color though. It's a peachy shade with a little bit of a pink undertone and it's very shimmery and frosty. So if you're looking for a more frosty shade, Naked Lunch is a beautiful one. The next shade up is Bisque. It's a discontinued shade, but I thought I would show it anyway. It is a matte light beige and it has more of a cool tone finish or a little bit of a neutral undertone to it. I have no idea why they discontinued this shade because it is so beautiful. It's like a perfect medium tone beige shade. And then here we have the shade Kid, which is a matte finish as well. This one is described as a beige cashmere. Kid is also a very beautiful, medium toned, almost caramelly beige shade. This one is actually perfect for blending in the crease because of the shade. I really love this as a blending or a crease shade. It's just a really beautiful matte caramelly beige color. Then here we have the shade Era, which is a satin finish, and this one is described as a soft golden beige with shimmer. This one is a very light understated beige shade and the shimmer is actually really subtle and again a very beautiful shade and because of the subtle shimmer it would actually work really nicely on darker skin. And then we have the shade Malt which is a matte finish. This one is described as a soft pinkish beige. Malt is another beautiful blending crease shade. It is a matte finish but it's a little pinker than I would like. So if you have pink undertones, this is a great one. Or if you're just going for a very light neutral look, this one is a great one for the crease as well. And again, here are those beige shades swatched on my arm. Moving on to some more of the deeper beige shades. First up, we have the shade Rice Paper, which is a frost finish. This one is described as a peachy gold with shimmer. This one is one of my favorite light gold shades. It's such a beautiful color. It can be a little bit intense, but I love this for a highlight on the inner tear duct or under the brow. It's really beautiful. It applies very smoothly and it has great pigmentation. Then we have the shade Bamboo, which is a matte finish. This one is described as a light beige with peach. Bamboo is a great caramelly tone beige shade. It is great for blending in the crease and it's great for doing those warm looks. It has a matte finish so it's perfect for those kind of neutral looks. As you can see, it almost blends completely into my skin. 
Here we have Arena, which is a satin finish. This one is described as a soft gold peach with pearl. Arena is a beautiful warm toned peach shade. It's a shimmery shade as well. It's great for warm looks. It's great for darker skin because it has that warmer undertone. It's just a beautiful light peach color. And then here we have All That Glitters. This is a very popular one. This one is a Velox finish. It's described as a beige with gold pearl. All That Glitters is another beautiful peachy toned beige shade with a ton of golden shimmer. It's a really gorgeous one as well. I think this one is one of those shades that everybody should have in their collection because it's just so beautiful. It's popular for a reason. And then here we have the shade Texture, which is a velvet finish. This one is described as a peachy brown with shimmer. This one is a deeper caramel brown shade. It definitely has a lot of warmth to it. It applies really nicely and it has very fine micro shimmer to it. So it's not completely matte. It's another beautiful shade and it actually works well in the crease for blending and for warming up looks. The next shade is Soba. This one has a satin finish and it's described as a gold brown with gold shimmer. This is definitely more of a gold beige and it has a slight golden shimmer to it as well. It is definitely better for those with warmer skin tones. It's a great color as well for blending in the crease and it's not completely matte so it's actually a very wearable everyday color. And then next we have the shade Patina which is a frost finish. This one is described as a taupe brown with golden pearl. Patina is a very understated color on my skin tone. It actually has just almost like a natural shimmer on my skin. It's a very subtle color. It's actually great for those of you that like neutral looks. It would work great for an all over lid color as an inner tear duct highlight because it's very understated. And then we have Temptin, which is a luster finish. This one is described as a sinfully rich cocoa. This one is a richer, deeper bronze and gold shade with a little bit of shimmer to it. It's a really smooth texture for a luster finish. This one is actually one that I would recommend even though it's a luster. So again, here are those medium tone beige shades and a couple of medium tone browns tossed in. Staying in the medium beigey and brown shades, we have the shade Vex, which is a frost finish. This one is described as a beige with pink and green pearl. This is a beautiful shade. It's a great duochrome. It has like an olivey green sheen to it and a lot of pink. It's just a beautiful color. I think this one is one of those interesting shades that you, if you love gray looks, if you love neutral looks and you just want a little bit of an interest, that one is a good one. Here we have Retrospect. This one is a luster finish. It's described as a bleached blonde. This one is a dusty, very light golden beige shade. Again, it's a luster finish, so it's going to be a little bit sheer, but it's not as chunky as some of the other lusters. It's a little bit more smooth. Then we have Omega, which is a matte finish. This one is described as a soft, muted beige taupe. And this one is just a gray toned beige shade. It's a medium toned beige. It's a great neutral undertone. It works great if you're just going for a very subtle, daily, neutral look. Next we have Honesty, which is a luster finish. This one is described as a pewtered bronze. This one is an interesting shade. It's like a light beigey shade with a little bit of peach and a pink to it. This one is more of a shimmery shade and it does have a ton of fallout because of that luster finish. Not my favorite shade at all. Then here we have Wedge. This one is a matte finish. It's described as a soft muted beige taupe. Wedge is a great neutral blending shade. It's just a matte beige with a neutral undertone. I can use this in the crease for more neutral looks. Now here we have Soft Brown. This one is a matte finish. This one is described as a soft golden peachy brown. Soft Brown is more of a warm tone beige shade. This one definitely has a lot more warmth to it than the previous shade. And then here we have Mulch. This one is a velvet finish. It's described as a red brown with bronze pearl. This one is a deeper, bronzier shade. It has a little bit of golden sheen to it as well. And then what would the bronzes be without the shade Bronze? This one is a frost finish. It's described as a gold brown with gold bronze shimmer. 
bronze is a deeper bronze in shade it definitely has more of a golden undertone to it and it's a great shade I just love bronze if you're looking for just a simple everyday bronzy brown shade this one is a great one it has good pigmentation without being overly frosty and then we have the shade Saddle. This one is a matte finish. It's described as a golden orange brown. Saddle is a deeper, more orangey toned brown shade. It's definitely another great one for the crease for a transition shade. It works well for warm looks as well. And here again are more of those medium tone neutral shades. Keeping with the medium tone neutrals and some bronzes, the first shade up is Amber Lights. This one is a frost finish. It's described as a peachy brown with shimmer. This one is a bold, like in your face, golden, like an orangey toned bronze shade. It's a really beautiful shade with great pigmentation and intense shine. Then we have Charcoal Brown, which is a matte finish. This one is described as a muted taupe brown. This one is a medium tone neutral brown, so it has a little bit of a gray to it. It's a great shade for deepening up looks as well. Then we have Cork, which is a satin finish. This one is described as a muted golden brown. This one is definitely a beautiful transition shade as well. It's more of a golden brown, but it still has a little bit of a neutral undertone as well. Great for working in the crease and in neutral looks. Then we have Espresso, which is also a matte. This one is described as a muted golden brown. This is a deeper, richer golden brown. It's a beautiful, like almost coffee tone. It's again another great shade for adding in the crease, adding in the outer C. You can even use this for your eyebrows. And then we have Coquette, which is a satin finish. It's described as a muted grayish taupe. This one is again a gray tone neutral brown shade. It's a very great shade again for neutral brown looks or if you're going for even a gray tone look or a smoky look, this is a great one to use as a transition shade. This one is Copper Plate. It's a matte squared finish. It's a muted mid-tone gray. This one is a muted almost purple toned gray neutral shade. It is definitely more gray and more purple than a neutral brown, but it's a beautiful transition shade as well. And then here we have Concrete, which is a satin finish. This one is described as a muted taupe brown. This one is a gray toned brown again. It's a great transition shade. Their matte shades actually build up pretty well and pretty nice on the skin and blend out without being patchy. So I definitely recommend these matte shades for building up dimension in your crease, for using in everyday neutral looks. They're definitely beautiful shades. And then here we have the shade Woodwink. This one is a Velox Pearl. It's described as a warm antique gold. This shade is just a warm bronzy shade. It's not too intense or too in your face. It's actually a very wearable, subtle bronze shade, and it has even a little bit of a peachy pink shift to it as well. And again, here are those shades swatched. Moving on to more pinky and plum tone neutrals, the first up is Quarry. This is a matte finish. It's described as a soft muted plum brown. Quarry is a beautiful plummy brown shade. It's definitely great for purple looks, or more cool tone looks. It's a great transition shade and because it's matte, you can use it in the crease or you can use it to deepen up a look depending on your skin tone. Then here we have Shale, which is a satin finish. It's described as a mauve plum with subtle shimmer. This is also a beautiful plummy shade, but it has more of a shimmery finish. It's not a high shine frost. It's more of a shimmer satin finish. Another beautiful shade for purple looks. Then we have Ho or Hoax. It's a satin finish. It's a soft muted rosy brown. Again, another plummy, more rosy toned brown shade. This one is definitely a lot more pink rather than purple. Again, it's a beautiful transition shade for cooler looks and more pink tone looks. Then we have another one of MAC's popular shades. This is Satin Taupe. It's a frost finish and it's described as a taupe with silver shimmer. This is a plummy taupe shade. 
so it has a bit of a cooler undertone it's a great shade again for neutral looks that's why it's so popular and I recommend this for everyday looks and just for any and everyone to have in their collection then we have Sable which is a frost finish this is described as a gold plum with bronze pearl this one is more of a bronzy or a red and bronze shade then we have Twinks this is a Velox finish it's described as a deep plum with pearl this is a beautiful medium tone bronze shade with a more plummy finish then we have handwritten which is a matte square this described as a rich chocolate brown this is a beautiful chocolate brown it's a great shade for the crease and for building up dimension and again it's another nice one to have in a neutral palette and then we have Embark, which is a matte finish. It's described as an intense reddish brown. This one is a beautiful, rich, dark, reddened tone brown. Another great shade for deepening up looks. Embark is just one of those all around great neutral shades. Again, here are those more plummy shades, more red based brown neutrals. Now we're moving on to some deeper, still rosy brown shades. These are more red tone browns. First up we have Corduroy, which is a matte finish. It's described as a muted reddish brown. This one is a deep kind of espresso brown with a little bit of a red undertone. A gorgeous deep neutral shade. Then we have Brown Down. This one is a Velox finish. It's described as a teddy bear brown. Oh, that's cute. This is a beautiful deep, again, another espresso brown. It looks very similar to the previous shade, but it has a little bit more rich red undertone to it. And then here we have Swiss Chocolate, also a matte. This is described as a muted reddish brown again. This one is definitely more of a medium tone red and brown shade. A beautiful shade with great pigmentation. Swiss Chocolate is one of their popular and really great shades as well. And then we have Brown Script, which is a matte square. This one is described as a warm chestnut brown. This one is an orangey tone medium brown. Again, another great shade for adding in the crease. It's definitely a bolder orange shade on my skin tone next to the other shades that we've swatched. And then here we have the shade Foley, which is a satin finish, just described as a reddish plum brown. This is definitely a red tone brown shade. It's a lot of cranberry undertones to it, a very plummy, beautiful transition shade for those really red tone looks. And then this shade up is Ground Brown, which is a matte finish. This one is described as a deep, rich brown. This one is a really rich, deep brown shade. It's actually a great shade for darkening up the crease, for smoking out a look, or even for a substitute for a black in a smoky look. And then last up we have the shade Bron, which is a satin finish. This one is described as a muted blackish brown. This is also a very beautiful, rich black and brown shade. It's a deep espresso brown, but it has more of like a neutral undertone. So it's not very warm or very cool tone. It just is a neutral tone with that gray tint to it. So again, here are really deep, dark brown shades. We have some warm shades, some cooler shades, and even some neutral undertones that you can pick from. These are some beautiful shades to use in smoky looks or to deepen up a look. Here we have the silvers, the grays, and the blacks in the collection. First up, we have the shade Crystal, which is a frost finish, and this one is described as a violet duochrome with pearl. This one is a light, almost gray toned lavender shade with a duochrome shift to it. It's really beautiful. This one is sheerer in finish. You can use it for an inner tear duct highlight. It's just a really simple, subtle purple duochrome shade. Next we have the shade Idle Eyes, which is a luster finish and it's described as a silvered violet with gold. This one is a bit of a different color. It's a duochrome. It has gold and purple reflex to it. It's like a dustier version of Crystal. Because it is a luster finish, of course it has that looser pigment to it. So if you're gonna play with lusters, I think this is an interesting one because it has that dual chrome effect. Now we have the shade Scene, which is a satin finish. This one is described as a muted blue-gray. This one is a beautiful, almost matte gray shade with a blue undertone to it. It's a really beautiful, almost cement gray shade. Then we have the shade Silver Ring, which is a Velox, and this one is described as a gray with silver sheen. This one is a 
nice medium toned silver shade. It's not too frosty though, so it makes it a very wearable silver. And then here we have the shade Night Divine, which is a Velox as well, and this one is described as a black with silver pearl. This one is a deeper, more sooty charcoal silver shade. If you're looking for a deeper silver, this one is definitely a great one. It has great pigmentation and builds up nicely and smoothly on the skin. And here we have the shade Print, which is a satin finish, and this one is described as a muted gray with shimmer. This one is a medium deep charcoal gray shade. The shimmer to it is just micro fine silver shimmer, but it barely shows up on the skin. This one is almost like a dirty gray shade because it has a little hint of brown to it. And then next we have Typographic, which is a matte squared, and this one is described as an asphalt black. Typographic is more of a muted charcoal black shade. This is definitely a great alternative to black. It's great to just add depth to a look without being too overwhelming or too intense. And then we have the shade Black Tide, which is a velvet finish. This one is a black with silver sparkle. This one is a matte black base with silver sparkle. The silver sparkle actually doesn't really stick to the skin, so it doesn't really show up that well, but the black is a nice, rich black at the base. And then last up, we have Max Matte Black Shade. This is Carbon. It's described as an intense black shade. Carbon is a decent black shade. There are better blacks on the market, but it's a decent black shade if you're just looking to pick one up and you don't need the blackest black or the richest pigmentation. It's a nice black for smoking out looks. And again, it's a very wearable black because it is not overly intense. And here again are the silvery, gray toned and black shades from Max Collection. All right guys, so hopefully these swatches were helpful for you to navigate the wonderful world of MAC eyeshadows at their new price point, to see the different shades next to each other, to figure out which shades you may be interested in trying out. And as I mentioned before, I will leave links below where you can check these out and definitely use eBay so you can get some rebates for your purchases. And until my next video, which will be very soon, I'll talk to you guys. Bye.